Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Lindsay and I run the blog Brooks for Christian Girls. I'm so glad you clicked on this video and I hope you enjoy it. Just like every other book tour, I will be talking about my 2020 favorite books and then my 2021 reading goals. 2020 was a pretty meh year reading wise, at least for me. Uh, in the beginning of the year, I really focused more on just rereading books I owned and then I ended up unhauling about 80 books, which I was pretty proud of myself for that. That also helped when we unexpectedly slash expectedly moved in the middle of the year. So that was nice. That was a little bonus thing. But yes, I really just focused on rereading books I'd already owned, which was a good thing. That was a good thing to do. Not discounting that, but not a lot of new favorite books happened this year. And then I also read quite a few what I call mainstream or secular middle grade books because I typically focus on Christian fiction on my channel. And I tried out quite a few, but most of them were pretty terrible. They, most of the middle grade books I read were pretty terrible, but I did read a couple I enjoyed. But yeah, 2020 was kind of a eh, year overall. And then reading wise, it was just meh. When we moved at the end of June, my reading schedule was kind of thrown out the window. So it kind of got a little more sporadic reading the rest of the year. But I did overall complete my Goodreads 2020 reading challenge of 50 books by 111 books, which was exciting. I meant to in the fall up it to 100, but I just kept forgetting and Oops, that's what happened. So it, it was the goal was technically 50 books and I surpassed that. So yay. So I actually, I, I don't think I've ever done this before, but I was able to put my favorites into a top five category, like in order. Typically I always have to do the disclaimer, no, and in order, I loved all these books. You know, that kind of disclaimer that we always do, but this time I actually have my top five favorites and the first one like number one is not going to be a shock because I made a whole video talking about that book but anyway here we go I got to do my honorable mentions first though right like honorable mentions you always have your runner ups so the first one is going to be The Thief of Blackfriars Lane by Michelle Grip, Grippy Grip I'm not sure how to pronounce the author's last name I have this book but it's currently on loan to one of my sweet book ladies at my church, and she's really enjoying it. I t did I talk about this book? I did actually! In my last video, I talked about it in my anticipated reads for 2021. The first half, it released on January 1st, and the publisher was very kind to send me an advanced reader copy, and I really enjoyed it. She is a Robin Hood-like character, and he is a constable in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and I just find that plot line to be so fun, and I enjoyed it. I do wish there was a couple parts that weren't in it, so that's why it's an honorable mention, content-wise, but it was still a very fun read. My next honorable mention is actually a series I reread this year, and that is the Sweet, Se the Sweet Seasons series by Debbie Vigui, Vigui, I'm sorry. And I have read the series before, but I reread the series when I just needed a good pick me up and laugh. And contemporary YA books, especially in the Christian genre, just do that for me. And I just, yeah, it's such a fun series. She works at an amusement park. This first book, she gets a summer job at the amusement park. And her name is Candace, but she gets a job as one of the, as manning one of the cotton candy vendors and so her name tag happens just happens to say candy instead of Candace and yes it's just a cute cute series now my top five number five I gave four stars and that is The Love Note by Joanna Davidson Politano this was such a fun book there was just so much to it I honestly would love to reread it and that's the case with all these books I would reread them right now if I had a moment to spare and they were all just that good so with this one it is a historical I'm going to consider it a mystery because this girl has a desk that came from another family and she happens to find a love letter in it or just a, a love note <laughs> 
and it's just the who thinks the leather is for them and how they react and just so much of it was just so it was poetic in the sense of writing like when I read the opening few chapters my brain just went this has such Jane Austen vibes to it and it should be noted I've never read a Jane Austen book don't please don't come for me but I've seen the movies it's probably the wrong thing to say on book two isn't it but I, I know the style and it just had that vibe to it and it was just so such a fun book it was really just so much fun there were so many little notes in it that I was like oh 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 it was just fun so I even I never make little tag notes in my books but I actually did for one part because I just loved the lines so much that they said so yes Book number five got four stars, The Love Note by Joanna Davidson Palatano. Number four got four stars, and it is To Steal a Heart by Jen Toronto. This was the beginning of her new series, The Bleecker Street Inquiry Agency, and all I feel like I should have to tell you, set in, let me give you the exact date, 1886. Set in 1886, and the women of this boarding house start a inquiry agency aka a detective agency and it's Jen Toronto so her books are always just so fun and funny and I just enjoy seeing what in the world her characters are going to get themselves into because secondhand embarrassment from book characters is a very real thing and I think it's just so much fun though so yes, this was such a fun book, and I'm happy to give it spot number four on my top five books of 2020. Number three is The Last Drop by Erin Mangum. This also got four stars, and this is technically the last book in the Maya Davis series. I love this author. It should be no shock that her book is on this list because I love this author. I talk so much about her books. I talk about them on Instagram, on here, wherever I can, I will talk about her books because they are just so much fun. They are so faith filled and I just, they just make me happy. And this book was bittersweet in the sense of it's technically the last book in the series. So, I mean, it right now it is the last book in the series, but it left it where everything was resolved, but it was open-ended. And like I said when I did a little review of this book on this channel, I love the books where it feels like you're just a part of that character's life for that season, basically. Not like a physical season, but just for a time in their life, you are a part of their lives and you're seeing their lives. But when the book ends, the characters' lives don't end. Like, it continues on, so like, it doesn't eliminate the chance of another book possibly being written someday because it makes you feel like the book the book characters are still out there doing their life and I don't know there's just something about that I think some of y'all might have understood what in the world I just meant by that hopefully you did and yes that was the series for me it's such a fun series and book four and five in this series are actually following a new friend of Maya's so it's not actually Maya's point of view but we see Maya and we just oh it was just oh there was parts I'm just like <laughs> and then I was laughing and just I uh, yes it was such a fun series so if you've watched some of my videos or even just like my more recent videos you already know what my top spot number one is so I'm very curious to see what you think number two is what do you think number two is let me know and here we go, book number two on my top five books of 2020. I'm just being so dramatic in this, I apologize, y'all. I got four and a half stars, and that is Story of Trouble by Jen Toronto. This was the third book in her American Heiresses series. This released earlier in 2020, and then To Steal a Heart released later in 2020. Love an author that can put out two books a year. Yes, please. Thank you so much. And I went on Instagram after I read this book and I just fangirled for about five minutes, roughly. Well, probably not quite five, but it could have been five minutes because I was just so head over heels, just adoring this book. And I, ooh, ooh. I just 
just reading the back cover. Like, I can just pick up any Jin Toronto book and just start reading, and the first chapter is just gonna make me smile, especially her debut book, A Change of Fortune. And this book had that kind of vibe of it. I just adored this book so much. I loved the characters. Norman, the main guy, I believe I called him like an adorable baby giraffe. Like, he's just so awkward especially around our main girl and just, you know, women. But it's just, I enjoyed it. It was just so much fun. I'm doing an awful job giving recaps about these books, but that's pretty normal for my channel, so I apologize. I will be linking all these down below in the description. So if you go, that's a pretty cover, or, oh, she's really excited about that book, let me check into it. The links are down below for y'all. And then book number one. The only book in my 2020 reading that got five stars. I made a whole 20 some video, 20 some minute video talking about it. The Librarian of Boone's Hollow by Kim Volg Sawyer. If you're expecting me to summarize my thoughts for this in like 20 seconds compared to 20 minutes, I'm sorry it's not going to happen because I just adored this book so very much. It is about. How do I describe this book? Ah. Uh... <laughs> Wonderful. Just wonderful. It's set around the time of the Great Depression and it's about horseback librarians that would go deliver books to other people and I loved it. The main girl. I'm her number one fan. I've already claimed the spot. Sorry, I'll, it's my spot. I'm number one. And I just adored, adored, adored this book. I don't know how else to talk about it. I just don't because ah, I adored it. I hit myself with my glasses. That happens so much on filming these videos, but that's okay because I love this book. And yep, there we go. My top five books. Woohoo! My top five books of 2020 with a few honorable mentions because would it really be one of my videos if I didn't do an honorable mention? Come now. So, ta da! Woo! Yes, I know four out of five of these are historical, but that's, I read a lot of historical fiction, and especially this year, there was just some really good ones that came out this year. So, ta-da! Because four out of five of these did come out in 2020, actually. Huh. I typically just do the books I read in 2020, but this almost was my favorite books that were released in 2020. That's impressive. I didn't even know that till right now. Huh. Well, good job, y'all. Good job. And with that part, goodbye 2020. <laughs> and now, hello 2021. Here are my reading goals for 2021. For 2021, I'm really not setting any reading goals besides the fact that I'd like to read at least 50 books. And I do hope to bump it to 100 in the fall, mid-year, whenever. If I remember, because yeah, that was my problem in 2020, I didn't remember, but you know, whatever. I would like to work on my TBR. My next video is actually going to be a book haul. Ooh, look forward to that. And I have now added to my TBR and I have to work on it quite a bit. I also have quite a few that are on my official TBR that have been on my TBR since the beginning of my booktube channel and now four years on booktube. That's Kind of pitiful, Lindsay, so I'm going to try to do better on those. I'm staring right at them. There's like, what, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, ten-ish books I have had for years and not read them. So, they're going to hopefully, at least most of them will be read this year, hopefully. I hope, but yes. <laughs> I would, though, also like to attempt to read new Christian fiction authors, or at least new-to-me Christian fiction authors, and I'll be doing that via my library. I have been in the Christian fiction book publishing industry as a blogger and social media person for almost eight years. It'll be eight years in April, which is very shocking to think about. And I really know all the main, all the, all the big authors. I know most of the middle authors, but there's been a few that have snuck through the cracks of my radar, which is a very big radar, I'd like to say. So how people snuck through, I don't know. But if there are a few that I've heard a little bit about and now they've published two or three books and I'm like, oh, I don't think I've read any of your books yet. So I have a slight list of those I'm going to be checking out that my library has. And yes, I do hope to 
try out some new authors, and hopefully I'll find at least one author I really, really enjoy and can look forward to their books each time. I hope. I hope, I hope. I mean, I mean, my favorite authors aren't putting books out as much anymore, so I've got to experiment and try anyway, so I'm going to try to do good with that this year. Wish me luck. And those are my, I guess you could say my goals. I don't feel like that was really goals besides the 50 books and a couple little personal challenges I hope to do for the new year. But there you go. That is my 2020 favorite books in a top five order, which I've never done before. Wow. Wow. And then 2021 reading goals. Let's hope 2021 will be a good year and we can get lots of reading done and there'll be lots of good new books for us to read. And yes, I'd love to know what you've set your Goodreads goal at, or maybe you're just going to read however much you can. That sounds totally good too. I'm tempted to do that one year, but I always just fall prey to the Goodreads challenges. And I enjoy them. I like seeing the color each year. So there we go, y'all. That was my books, my goals. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see y'all next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. And look out for my next video that will be a book haul. So thank you all so much for watching. I'm Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls at blogsweat.com where in 2021 there's a new review every Monday and Friday. I hope to have a new video on this channel every other Thursday. Maybe every Thursday if I have time. No promises. And I hope to post on Instagram more often. But I will see y'all next time. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye!